Luke chapter 6. That's where we're going to be today. Just five verses, fairly quick. We'll go through it. But I really want us to all really pay attention tonight because these three things that I'm going to be talking about are things that we all need to be applying to our lives if we haven't already. They're super essential for our lives. We're going to start in verse 27. But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee. And of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. Drop down to verse 36. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Be ye therefore merciful, as your fa Father also is merciful. There was a son sent from his father to die to become a complete payment for all the sins of all mankind. That was Jesus Christ. Amen. Past, present, and future sins. Mm -hmm. He paid what we can never pay ourselves. Mm -hmm. And as believers, we have no excuse to not show mercy to all of those around us. Mm -hmm. He paid the ultimate price. It's our duty yeah. to show his love to everyone around us. Amen. I want us to see three ways in which we can express mercy to the, all of the people in our lives, and more specifically for especially the first two points, show mercy to those who have hurt us in the past or are going to hurt us in the future. First of all, look with me at the beginning of verse 28. Bless them that curse you. I see first, these are all one word, bless, be kind to those that have hurt you. How many have ever been hurt before by someone in the past? <laughs> How many of you that ticked you off, kind of bothered you for a while? Come on. I'm hoping that we all got that right with that person. We've forgiven them and moved on. But I'm sure there's someone in here that hasn't made something right. I'd obviously encourage you to do that first before everything else. It's just going to linger and affect you, and it's just not a fun situation for you or that person. All of us have been hurt in the past. Has anyone ever been lied about? Some false accusations, some whatever. I know I have. I Some of them are just completely crazy. I don't even know how they even came up with it. Like They must have had a lot of time on their hands. That's happened to me before. But what do we have to do? We have to bless them. We have to be kind to them. And a lot of you, especially with people specifically in Malone, I'm sure there's at least one guy in Malone, for all of us, that he just rubs you the wrong way. And I might even be that to you, who knows? But there might at least be one person, and if not in our dorm room, I guarantee you in the college, there's one person that might rub you the wrong way, where they ticked you off as a freshman, now you're junior or senior, and you just haven't let it go, okay? And so what do we do? Many times we see him in the distance, okay, I'm going to walk all the way around Sisk, just so I don't see him going from Lawrence all the way to Rebels, okay? We walk around, or we go by, like, you know, just walking past him. A smile does so much. Yeah. The least we can do, I've kind of listed these points from easiest to hardest, in a sense. And the first one is just be kind. You can, be, you can smile at them, you can say hi, you can ask them how they're doing. It's very simple. And it sounds easy to do, but I know I've done it, and I've seen many people at this college, you can tell when someone has beef between each other just how they walk past each other mm -hmm. and how they don't acknowledge the other person's existence, okay? Yes. Yeah. That's our first one. Secondly, look at the second half of verse 28. And pray for them, which despitefully use you. Mm -hmm. Second, obviously we see pray. And more specifically, pray for those who have hurt us in the past, those who have wronged us in the past, said lies about us in the past. It's really easy to just say hi, just whatever. That might take a little bit of courage. That might take a little bit of letting your own pride, flushing that down the toilet, and just saying hi to someone mm -hmm. and not acting all righteous and better than everyone else. Mm -hmm. But after that, it takes a lot to pray for someone. Yeah. And I'm sure most of us have heard this quote, how can you say you love someone and not pray for them? Yeah. And I would say, how can you say you love God and not pray for his people? We're all made in God's image. Good. All of us. Yeah. Yeah. How can mm -hmm. we not pray? for someone. I don't care. I, I've heard of crazy things that have happened to people, things in our minds that are unforgivable. But just think about Jesus on the cross. Yeah. We all remember Dr. Getch's message, those that were there. That was very gruesome. That was very real. You almost felt like you were there. Yeah. He's done that for us. Why can we not just forgive someone for lying about us one time? It's not the end of the world. They even try to kill us or anything, okay? There's something like that. Yeah. But I know it weighs heavy on us. But I guarantee you, and this is one of my challenges today, there's one person possibly that's entered your mind right now as I'm talking about this. Maybe you're on the kindness part. You're on that first level. 
You're being kind to them. You're acknowledging that they're a human and they're still alive. <laughs> but if you pray for them, I ask you to pray for them for five minutes for seven days. Five minutes for the next seven days. By the end of that seven days, I can guarantee you that you're going to view them differently. You're going to view them more how God views every single human being that's here on this planet and that's ever existed. God loves every single one of us. And God, God didn't just die for you on the cross. He died for everyone, yeah. even those that have hurt us. We've seen that we need to bless those that hurt us, and we've seen that we need to pray for those that hurt us. And thirdly, I want us to see in verse 30, we all need to give. And more specifically, we need to give to those who can give nothing back to us. Yeah. Verse 30 says, Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away my goods, ask them not again. Thy goods, ask them not again. Just as a rule of thumb, if you really, really, really need your money in your wallet, don't lend it to someone and then be like awake at night because you need that money and you just gave it away and you really need them to pay you back. If you just give someone money, if they borrow money, just pretend like you're never going to get it back. That's just a good rule of thumb. I heard that from my dad when I was a kid and I've just lived yeah. by that. Yeah. If someone says, hey, I just need five bucks for something, I'll pay you back later. I'll cash app you. <laughs> cash app's a joke. To whenever <laughs> someone says that, just... They're lying, okay? They're going to pay you back. <laughs> Unless you hassle them. By then, now you lost a friend probably because you're all ticked at each other. And so if someone asks for money and you're able to give it to them, just give it to them, forget it, move on. Later on, if they pay you back, that's great, that's whatever, but just move on from it. That's a little side note. But we need to give to people who we can't get anything back from. Uh, who here knows Peter Moore? Mm -hmm. Pastor Chapel's son-in-law. He's the pastor over here at uh, New Life Baptist Church. It's our, the extension here. It's going to be autonomous soon. Um, Jared Coburn, I used to be his assistant over in Lawrence. Me and him were talking one time. He was in on a meeting that um, Peter Moore had with one of the staff people here at LBC. And the LBC staff member, I'm not going to say his name, but he said, your church is just growing. It's crazy, just exponentially, even faster than a, a big church like ours is. So many, people are, so many people are getting saved. So many people are getting added to the church, getting saved, baptized, discipled, everything. How? Why? What's going on? And he asked him one simple question. This really spoke to Jared, and it's really spoken to me since I heard it. He asked that LBC staff member. He said, when was the last time you did something for someone who could do absolutely nothing for you in return? The, the guy, honestly, was like, honestly, I can't remember. Usually we have an agenda. Usually it's almost if that person has given us some trouble or whatever, we're trying to witness to him, we just forget it, we just move on. We don't invest even an ounce of time. We want that visitor to be with us in the service. Maybe it's a friend day, whatever. We just skip over them. That's a person that needs Jesus just like anyone else. And some might be harder to witness to than others. But that doesn't mean that they don't deserve a chance to hear the gospel and to go to heaven because you witness to them. And he asked him that. And when Peter Moore replied, he said, all these people that are getting saved for the most part, getting discipled, getting baptized, all of that, those are people that two years ago had him over to my house for lunch, never saw him again. I went to the park, passed out water bottles, talked with him for 60 minutes about their kids, about their life, about their story, never saw him again. They've seen the faithfulness of the ministry. They've seen his faithfulness in his ministry. He's constantly gone back and gone back and gone back to people. In our culture today, it's very important. So many people don't, they don't care about face value. Their first impression of you, whether it's good or bad, they aren't just going to go with you or they aren't just going to believe you. They need to see you live mm. what you're telling them. Yeah. And many times we think that by giving to people, we need to give financially. The poorest person in the world still has the time that God's given them. Yeah. They're still alive. They're a human being. And all of us, even if you're completely broke, even if you're five grand behind on your school bill, you can still give time to someone in need. I know I'm speaking from personal experience, and I think many of us can attest to this. We're all busy. We have jobs or whatever. We're rushing into the dorm. We have the first 30 minutes of free time that feels like two centuries, and we just want to crash, go to sleep, or we need to catch up on homework, whatever. We see a person off to the side, whether it's in our dorm, whether it's around campus, we can easily see that they're having probably the worst day of their life, definitely not their best day. And all of us for a second think about, I wonder if I should help them or not, but I really need this time. It goes through our mind. Even though it's very small, minuscule amount of time, it enters our mind. I know it has for me. Yeah. And I can't say I've been perfect in helping that person out. 
even if it's just asking them how they're doing, letting them know that you're praying for them. That goes so much farther than you would ever know. I got this little note, it was actually just a sticky note, and it was kind of like beat up, but it was stuck on my door when I first started being a dorm suit in Lawrence, and I really just felt just really intimidated by being in that position as a junior. I know there were seniors, stuff like that. After the first night I was checking rooms, actually it was the second night after I checked rooms, I went back to my door and there was a post-it note on my door. And still to this day, I have no idea who wrote it. I really don't, but I still have that note. And I've reread that many, many times. I had a couple Bible verses. It basically just said that they, I guess they admired me and they respected me and that I was gonna do a great job as a dorm seat. And that did a lot for me. And that was a stinking post-it note. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come on. You can just say something to someone mm -hmm. and make their entire day you don't know, some people might be struggling with depression. Yeah. Super big amount of anxiety. Someone back home is struggling with cancer and they haven't announced it for the whole college to hear it. Yeah. They haven't said that their friend is struggling with suicide back home and that's weighing on them yeah. really tough. Yeah. Some people act all big and all showy and all they're laughing, but deep down, it's important that we don't just take everybody for granted. Yeah. We need to focus on every single person that God's placed into our life. And so we've seen, really easy to remember, we need to bless people, be kind to them, especially those who have hurt us. We also need to pray for them. And lastly, we need to give to those who really can't give anything back to us at all. Or maybe give our time, finances, whatever it is, maybe even to people who've hurt us in the past, and we give them a second chance. I know I've gotten a second chance. I know I was alive for 20 years before I ever got saved last September, September 13th. I could have died a ton of times. I've gotten probably millions of chances since I've been born <laughs> that I could have gone straight to hell. And God gave me unlimited chances. Give someone a second chance. Yeah. Show them Christ's love. Two quotes and then I'm done. C.S. Lewis once said, I do not believe one can settle how much we ought to give. I am afraid the only safe rule is to give more than we can spare. The only safe rule is to give more than we can spare. Do people give their brand new clothes to go Goodwill? Nope. They give their trash one's got a cigarette butthole in the back, you know. They give that to Goodwill. They don't give their best. God gave his best to us. Yeah. His everything to us. Yeah. We can give our best of our time to God and also to God's people. Yeah. And to everyone that God has created in his image. Every single person on this planet. A man once said, give according to your income. Lest God make your income according to your giving. Give according to your income, lest God make your income according to your giving. We all know that God blesses people that give. We all know that. Blesses them amazingly. And we also know Jonah's a perfect example. When God tells us to do something or we have an opportunity to do something and we don't do it, God can humble us. God can shake us. You don't want God to shake you so much and make you feel so small for you then to just then realize how big he is. God is such a big God. God is full of grace and truth, and you can see that in Jesus Christ's life. We need to show that to everyone around us. Verse 36 says, Be therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful.